Hello, this is Starshot here to welcome you back to my Let's Play of Castle in the Darkness. We last left off trying our very hardest on getting this one lost page that took so long that, yeah, sadly it took up most of the video. But, yeah, we were finally able to get it, and then we finally went over to the Cave of Serpents where we picked up a new spell, the Soul Blazer. And now we're here in the forest heading to Ruse Mansion so we can pick up another magic spell we missed there. So let's go ahead and get started. We also, like, there's a little side uh, item as well to pick up. As part of the whole 100% completion, that is something to pick up for, but it doesn't really do anything as far as I recall, so. But it shouldn't hopefully be too hard to get with our current kind of stats as they are. Darn it. So that's gonna be the only problem I'll, I'll have here, but it shouldn't be as bad as with that lost page we had. But let's see, I guess the number of lost pages I've collected, I think I should have them all except maybe one or two, I believe. That's one of the things I'll have to double check on for the most part. But it looks like for this area here, uh, you'll probably need the double jump for sure. You won't be able to pick this uh, item up otherwise. But here it is, the Willow Nut. So, as I said, I'm not, I don't think it really does anything. It's just one of these side items you can pick up for 100% completing the game here. But with that taken care of, we can pretty much move on now. And, oh, so we're almost there, actually, to Rue's Mansion. We just go over this way, past the boss room, past the zombie, past the red skeleton, past the mushroom, and here we are. So, the reason you probably didn't find the magic spell, or at least I didn't either, was because I didn't look at the signs. But, let me think what exactly I need to do to get it here. Uh, I'm actually just double checking something, don't worry about it being paused. Let's see... Man, it's kind of annoying that there are actually two, uh, you know, two different, uh, you know, magic spells here in the house. But then again, when you think about her being a mage and all, it probably makes sense. But yeah, supposedly, if you want to find the magic spell for this place, you need Roos Key to get it. Come on, let's see. So, for the place, or the door where we need Roos Key for, isn't of course the one in the basement, it's actually up top here, if I can remember about those missing blocks there. And it, of course it isn't bad when you do these this backtracking here to pick up some uh, gold as well. Let's see. So it should be pretty much back this way here. I remember going this way once before, but because I didn't have the key, because I didn't go through the other path first. Uh, you know. Oh, here we go. So you see this hand here that's kind of pointing down? Uh, the spikes are fake. Ta-da! And there's the giant hand we have to watch out for here. But there's explosion. And we can get back by using uh, the hand here. But now we got that taken care of. And we have now a new magic spell. The explosion. So it doesn't look too bad here. Should hopefully help us out. And now we'll be going after the last magic spell we can pick up before uh, heading off to the crystal tower. Uh, or actually there is one more after that now that I recall. Um, it's sadly, though, in the torture chamber. That place where I was hoping we would never have to return to. But apparently the giant uh, demon head um, that we kind of just went around before, apparently he drops a magic spell. And the only way to get it is if you can kill him. And of course, by killing him, you have to reflect his magic back at him. So I'll have to see if my new weapon here will do that or not, or if I'll need to use something else. 
But hopefully it shouldn't be too hard of a thing to do. And trying to get back to it should be a bit easier as well, because we do have the torch now, which I think once we kind of get to the castle, uh, you know, that area where the torture chamber path is, we should hopefully be able to uh, get to it. But now we're kind of heading back to the Cave of Serpents here, so we can use the warp point that's here to hopefully uh, find it, get a, a way faster back through out, out of here here. But yeah, the game itself really isn't too long. It just depends on kind of how much you want to do and uh, how long it can take you sometimes. Since it is helpful that you kind of move fairly quickly in the game, like, and each room is kind of room by room here. So as you can see here, we're almost at the warp point now, which will take us to the castle entrance, and we can then backtrack through there to get to the um, torture chamber. Uh, but then, of course, we also have to go to the grand entrance as well to get to the... Um, uh, other, other place that we're looking for for our magic spell here. But yeah, I figured it'd be faster to go this way. Yeah, there we go. And then of course I do need to, like, there was that one area I couldn't get through before, which I was curious about. But I'll, I think I'll check on that, of course, later, for now. Okay, so the torch we have here does at least help us see better. So, I was hoping it would maybe show everything, but I guess not. But we see all the blocks, we see there aren't any dangerous spikes we have to watch out for. And not much else to worry about either. So the so getting to the torture chamber really isn't difficult. It's just um, getting through it that's a problem. But hopefully we can do better this time. And it's a good thing, of course, I saved here. But we, of course, we found that it's oh okay. So the saw blade does go all the way there. I thought it didn't. But we've also learned that it's not really the enemies that kill you, it's the, um, traps. Here we go. But since we did kind of unlock a lot of things, which thankfully stay unlocked, uh, it thankfully makes things just a little bit easier here and there. There we go. And then of course don't hit that switch there. Let's go ahead and get to the save point just so I don't have to worry about dying to anything else or having to go too far. Because we are just looking for the giant floating head. We want to get the magic spell from him, which does take a while to get to him, sadly. But if you've had enough experience getting through here, then hopefully it shouldn't be too hard to deal with. There we go. And at least it won't be as bad as when we were trying to get the lost page from here as well, I remember. There we go. So here's the boss room here we don't have to worry about. Save point. Okay, so we still... So it's definitely a ways off still, but... I think it should be past uh, this room here, I believe. There we go. So now all we have to do is try to reflect his magic back at him here. And thankfully we have the right weapon to do it. There we go. Now we finally have the Thunder Blast. Which is pretty much what, we're, what our sword sort of does here on its own, randomly. So hopefully it can be of use for any of the other bosses I'm have to deal with here. But now we just 
need to get out and avoid any more traps. There we go. Pass them. Pass that. Thankfully, we're back at the save point here, so now we don't have to go worry about that room. So yeah, usually getting out isn't actually too hard, as you can see here. Since they do have a few ways to help make it easier, as well as just supposedly being easier in general, actually. Darn it. Okay, I screwed up with my jump there, but as I said, this next section isn't as bad I'm trying to get out. You just have to kind of watch it, be careful, and take your time. And as I said, since I kind of already done this once before, it's usually a bit easier, but I'm still getting a bit reckless sometimes. So, I guess, yeah, I'm not sure if I've said this before, but uh, usually when it comes to 100% completing a game, I kind of have my own criteria for 100% completing it. Because there are some games where 100% doing it is kind of ridiculous. Like, um, like I guess Breath of the Wild is kind of one of those that kind of almost hits that, like... Because I think 100% completing that would be like, um, getting all the shrines, beating all the bosses, and... Ah, darn it. I... Almost there. Almost there. But yeah, 100% completing it to me would be like, um... Uh, like, pretty much everything but maybe trying to get all, like, upgrading equipment completely. Like, I think upgrading one thing completely shouldn't be too hard. But I don't think you have to upgrade everything completely. And I think trying to get all the suits, um, like, I wouldn't consider that completing it, because, um, like, that's not really part of the game, or it doesn't really do anything for progression, for the most part. There we go. Okay, so we pretty much got through that area now. So, all that's left now... ...is to go through the grand, uh, entrance, I believe it's called, or something. And get the magic spell that was lost in there. But actually, it might be easier to teleport to the windy entrance and go that way. Which we should be able to do here shortly. There we go. Windy Ruins. So yeah, thankfully I'm doing a lot more progress this time. Oh, to the Grand Hall, it's called. I can never remember the names for some of these places. You know, because you don't really see them that often, or... But of course, I guess you should be trying to reference them, if, especially if you're trying to find stuff. Let's see here. Almost there. But yeah, so 100% completing it. Like, this game... Like, I think some of the items I picked up, like the Willow Nut or the Sushi... You don't really have to get if you want to 100% complete it. Like, for the game to tell you you 100% complete it, you do. But I don't think... Like, I wouldn't think I would want or do it other in any way, but... At least, for the most part, the, like, trying to get some of these items isn't actually that bad compared to other games I've played. Hmm, did I already get the thing in here? I think I did. Yeah, let me just check here. Because I feel like there might be something here that I forgot. Oh, wait, I actually got up there. 
Wow. Here we go. So this is actually... You have to beat this guy at the clock tower and then beat him here if you want to get the Gale magic here. And as you can see, he is a bit harder, but with our superior stats, we're pretty good to handle him with shouldn't be any problem. And there it is, the Gale Cutter. So yeah, this magic spell is actually pretty good from what I've, um, I think from what I remember. So you might want to use it for a few of the boss medals that sadly I didn't, because I didn't realize I missed it. Of course we're getting a bit low on health here. And then of course I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything else around here. But yeah, then we just have the magic spell there. Or, not magic spell, but some sort of treasure chest there. There we go. Yeah, we're pretty much now just trying to find our way back. To the save point here, which shouldn't be too much longer now. Oh yeah, that's pretty much all the magic spells you need to kind of pick up here. There we go. Uh, we are, there is one left, but that one is a bit easier to find and hard at the same time. And that's kind of what we'll be focusing on next here. So let's save, and let's go ahead. So... The last spell to get is called X Sword, I believe. And you can find that in the Crystal Tower. And uh, so it's a good idea, and if to take on the Crystal Tower, you'll want plenty of HP and Gale Wind as well as Sea Shock for some of the boss battles. So let me go ahead and equip Gale Wind. And uh, let's see, weapon-wise, we're just missing one now, which is um, another weapon you can pick up from an optional boss. And the armor, you have to get through the Drimstone, which you have to buy from a vendor, but he won't give it to you unless you spend 20000 And as you can see, we have most of the uh, things here, except for maybe one or two, by the looks of it. So, uh, But we should pretty much have everything we need for now to kind of move on, to try and get the uh, crystal, take on the crystal tower, I believe. Actually, what's my HP? Okay, yeah, we're pretty much good for HP, too. We're at 40 HP, which is, um, I, I think, about as high as you can get without taking on the boss. So, but we're pretty much set to take on the crystal tower, which is one of the hardest, uh, one of the harder areas to go through but definitely provides some pretty good rewards that I would suggest picking up. Of course, I'm not sure what this one's for. Oh yeah, so we have the Sorcerer's Quarters here, and the Crystal Tower, which we've already unlocked, but we figured we would take on maybe a bit later. So, let's see. I have the Gale Wind now. So, and I have a sword and armor, so let's go ahead and try and take this boss on again. Hmm. I was hoping that would do something more here. Oh, there we go. So, this is actually a pretty good one to use here, because you might have a better chance at actually hitting the boss with it. Because, as we tried before, the sword, you know, like, you kind of get into his range here. Or you can't always seem to hit him with it, as far as I can tell. So, well, let me look at, um, the other magic sea shock here. And see how much that helps. It's either gale wind or shield, um, sea shock here, for the most part. You could always try some other spells if you want to see how well those work, but I'll kind of... I keep forgetting he sh yeah, it kind of shows up here. Hmm. Okay, so Sea Shock actually I think is a bit better because as you can see, it pretty much, you know, does that to him. 
So, of course, I just need to time it a bit better here. When he comes down, like he does here. So yeah, definitely Sea Shock, I think, is the way to go for this boss here. On. There we go. Take a few good hits. Oh, darn it. There we go. So just kind of keep doing this to him, and that should hopefully take him down here. And of course he's a bit hard to see, but that's, I guess, his point, because he's kind of a ghost character here. On. Just a few more times here. So I guess I could have probably taken him on earlier if I wanted to, but there's like there's not too much of a rush because the bosses are kind of hard in this game, and so you kind of take him on when you feel like you need to. And now that we have plenty of magic here, we should hopefully have better luck as well. But having the extra health doesn't hurt either. And as you can see, they give us plenty of health. So let me go see if I can... Yeah. So it's also a good thing to do right after a boss is to always save. And But that's all the time we have for today. So join us next time as we uh, tackle the uh, rest of the Crystal Tower and see how far we can get. So until next time, have fun gaming.